In this video, we're going to be looking at the best way to find solutions to customer problems and complaints. Now, there are a few possible solutions that you have to dealing with different customer problems. When you're thinking about what you can suggest, you could do things like offer an alternative, offer a replacement, offer a refund, offer a compensation of some kind, or negotiate within your own personal authority, so the things that you are allowed to do as somebody serving customers in your organisation. When you're trying to work out what the best one of these different solutions would be, you'll be having to think about lots of different factors that come into play. So some of the different factors you'll need to consider are how these things impact, how the different types of solutions impact on your organisation. Part of this is about firstly recognising what the customer needs in this situation, complying with different legislation that comes into play, looking at the cost to your organisation of the different types of solution, thinking about the time restraints that might be in place and also the different policies that your organisation has in place to deal with customer complaints and deal with queries of different kinds. So firstly we're going to look in a bit more detail about customer needs. When you're dealing with a problem or a query that a customer brings to you, firstly it's really important to listen carefully. You want to establish the facts and really find out what it is that the problem is, where that problem lies. Then you need to really take ownership of that query. So this lets the customer know that you're going to be responsible for a resolution. So you're going to take on board everything that they're saying and you're going to solve that for them. To do all of this as well, you'll need to avoid emotional reactions or avoid rem emotional responses to what the customer is telling you. So it's important to not take these things personally, to deal with things just calmly and considerately. And you need to be showing empathy. So not sympathy, you don't feel sorry for the customer, but you understand where their complaint is coming from. So this is going to really help you in terms of working out what the customer needs in this situation, why they're bringing this query to you in the first place. Then you'll need to think about how you and your organisation are complying with different legislation. So we're going to cover each of these uh, points of legislation in a separate video, but here it's just useful to know what the different legislations would be. The first of those is the Sale of Goods Act, so that will govern anything that you're selling. Also the Supply of Goods and Services Act, very similar, so sometimes it might not just be an object that you're having a transaction with, it might be goods or services of a different kind. And then the Data Protection Act as well, this covers all of the personal data that you hold with that customer and how really to properly deal with that. The next factor that you're going to need to think about are the costs to your organisation. Now each different solution that, you've been, that we've been looking at in this list, so things like repairs or replacements, they all have a different cost to your organisation. Usually it's going to be cheaper to supply a replacement or a repair. So say you're in a restaurant um, and you deliver a bowl of soup to a customer. They, they have a complaint about that. Maybe it's not the right temperature or it's not the right uh, type of soup that you've brought them. It's going to be cheaper to supply a replacement bowl of soup or to solve that problem. So to repair that in whatever way is possible. You also need to think about what resources you have available to you and what other types of compensation you could possibly offer. So those might be things like money off or upgrades, vouchers or special deals that you can offer to the customer to help them feel better 
about the situation that's going on or help them solve uh, that issue that they've got, that problem that they've brought to you by giving them an upgraded service of some kind. The next of the factors that you need to consider are the time restraints. So sometimes when you're selling goods or services, there might be a warranty or a guarantee period. So within that time, maybe it's three months or maybe it's a year, the customer can have their goods repaired or replaced for no cost. So that's one of those things, again, it links into uh, that different legislation that you need to consider and it's going to give you a time restraint. So if they bring in a faulty piece of equipment two years after they've bought it and your guarantee is only really valid for one year, then you're not going to be able to deal with their complaint in the same way. So it will require a different way to deal with it. You might also have key performance indicators where you work. So these are things like ways to monitor the number of completed tasks possibly, or the time it takes to deal with a customer complaint or a customer problem. Those will be different, those will give you a different set of time restraints that you'll need to think about. And that's really closely linked to service level agreements, so SLAs. And service level agreements sit, set out what um, any customer can expect from your organisation. So it might be things like availability of your service or the amount of downtime when the service isn't available. It might be the length of time that uh, customers can expect to receive a reply or expect to have their problem fully resolved. So those will also be things that you need to consider when you're dealing with a query or a complaint. The last of the things that we're going to look at are the policies that your organisation might have in place. So usually this will help you to work out where the limits of your own authority are. So potentially you um, aren't really given the authority to give a refund to a customer. In that case, you're going to need to know who can. So this process is called escalation. When a complaint is brought from the first level, the first customer service person that uh, somebody is speaking to, up a chain, so through management and up that chain so that people can deal with the problem in different ways. This might mean things like bringing the query to your line manager or a senior member of staff who does have the authority to offer different things. But it also really means knowing who has that authority with different queries and solutions. So you're going to need to really understand how to escalate those problems, who best to bring them to. And the last point here is that when you're escalating something in this way, you're passing on the ownership of the query to another person. And it's really important that you let the customer know that that's what's happening. So they feel that their problem or their query hasn't just been left to the side in some way. So when you're dealing with customer problems, to round up these different, uh, different ideas that we've been looking at in this video, you want to be finding the best solution. So you're considering customer needs, how you comply with different legislation, what the costs are to your organisation, the policies that are in force and the time restraints that you've got to comply with. And this is going to help you best work out whether you should deal with the problem by repairing the situation, replacing something, refunding something, offering some other kind of compensation or an alternative that you can negotiate or that other staff members can negotiate to ensure that the customer is satisfied and feels that their problem has been dealt with properly.